Hey everybody, I'm Chris Fafalius, and I'm the producer of Chris Makes a Podcast and the host of the One Hit Thunder Podcast. And I'm Matt Kelly, host of Horror Movie Night and the producer slash the head of content for the Geekscape Podcasting Network. Between the two of us, we have, believe it or not, 25 years of podcasting experience, and we want to help you start your own podcast. We know podcasting, and we want to share that knowledge with you. So whether you're new to podcasting or you want some feedback on your currently active podcast, we want to help. Or perhaps you're just overwhelmed with all of the editing work. Well, we can help you with that also. You can check out our website at weknowpodcasting.com for more information. We're excited to help your podcasting dreams become a reality. So, we talked about Disney. We did talk about Disney. Do you know what Disney owns? Is it wrong to say everything? Because, yeah, I mean, let's, hold on, let's go through the list. Disney owns Pixar mm-hmm. and Marvel mm-hmm. and the Muppets mm-hmm. and uh, 20th Century Fox. Yep. And I, uh, is there one more thing that Disney owns? I can't quite put my... Oh, you mean like one of the greatest things in the world? Star Wars? Yeah, they own Star Wars, and they gave us a Lego Star Wars holiday special this past year, which I had not watched (laughs) (laughs) until until the other day. All right, so my discovery of the Lego Star Wars holiday special traces back to this past Christmas, which is apparently when it dropped, Um, and I didn't know that it dropped but what had happened was is we were about two days away from christmas break Mm -hmm. okay anybody that works at a school anybody that has attended school knows that two days before christmas break you ain't doing shit yeah like no school doesn't even really exist anymore at that so you're finding you're finding something to watch and basically i was like what's on disney plus that is about 40 minutes long (laughs) because our classes are shortened this year and I'm like, what what can we watch? Cause like we've all been working hard. We're we're all kind of over it. Like let we're ready for a break. So I came across the Lego Star Wars holiday special. And I kind of threw this on. And I I'm gonna be honest, man. I'm sitting there, and as soon as I kick, clicked play, all of a sudden sat back, and I was super unfamiliar with any of the Lego Star Wars stuff. So I don't I was like, this is gonna be real dumb like yeah. this is gonna be stupid i don't know why i'm putting this on i'm i'm just putting it on because it's star wars related and it's christmas related and i mean it just works especially because at this point to me I, this is just becoming a running theme on this podcast is dylan everything makes you think of christmas star wars makes me think of christmas <laughs> and i think it's because of in recent years all the new ones came out right before christmas Thanks. See, this is how you're able to maintain that Christmas spirit all year round. Because <laughs> every single thing. Makes yeah, you're like, Christmas. you're like, oh man, I'm feeling really Christmassy. Let me pop on the Last Jedi, that Christmas classic. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. That's why we'll never run out of topics. To no, talk for about. sure. So here's my my initial thoughts. I don't have a lot yeah. of notes written down because there's a lot happening. Dude, there's so much is happening. There's a lot happening. But I think what my final thing when i walked away from it was like that was really fun it was really cute i liked the message but it was not nearly as funny as what i've come to expect from lego in the sense of like my only real lego experience is like lego movie lego movie to the second one and lego batman yeah and i think that those are like three incredible comedies like i think that they are legitimately brilliantly written so i was like waiting for that same level of like absurd non sequitur stuff. And there's like a pieces of there's it. There's a little bit. Yeah. 
But this was like the med TV to the Lego movies SNL for me in a yes. lot of ways. Yeah. Where it's like, I see what you're doing. It's cute. <laughs> like, and that's kind of so, how I felt watching med TV a lot of the time. What was so funny is I got halfway through this thing and I'm absolutely loving it. But it's it's not because it's funny. I'm loving it because they throw some deep fucking cuts yeah. in this thing. I'm watching it and I'm, I'm sitting there. And I'm feeling bad as we're watching it with this is me watching it for the first time with the kids because I'm like, dude, I bet some of these kids have no fucking clue what's going on right now. No, it's well, because like you got the life day stuff going on, which is which is a throwback to the holiday special. You're literally jumping through timelines of all nine movies throughout this entire thing, which is where it's fun. It, It is a fun movie. Yes. I, I there's probably one of the better references in there is when uh, the two different Han Solos show up and the one asks the other, do you want to shoot first? <laughs> Which is like, it's like, all right, that's, I mean, that's kind of the level of the comedy in this for the most part is it's very cute. The, the one line that made me actually laugh out loud is Darth Vader sees Luke and he goes, my son. And then pauses and goes, <laughs> I mean, my, those binary <laughs> sons. <laughs> Dude, and that's that's what's funny about this. Like, this, some of the lines, it is not the, I don't even, th- I bet, I'm pretty sure it's probably not even the same team that did the Lego no. movies. No, 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 because no. there's a ton of Lego, like, there's a ton of companies doing Lego oh, stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that's the kind of humor you're getting with this. Very sarcastic. There's a lot of dryness. There was something weirdly adorable. I wrote down there's something very weirdly adorable about the emperor with his tiny Lego hands, like <laughs> tapping them together, all excited. Like there's little things that are really, really funny in this. It's like I said, it's just fun. Like, yeah. And like, this is not this is not. I apologize for those of you who joined this show thinking that we're going to run through the entire thing because you can't. There is no. a f- metric fuck ton of stuff happening it would take longer for us to explain this than it would be to just watch it and come back to the episode yeah so just know that ray is training finn gets discouraged which is funny goes that off. scene yeah. i'll give that scene funny because you had the little bird things or whatever all yeah the staring porgs. at him yeah the porgs are staring at him he has his nice little freak. I chuckled quite a bit, actually, at the training sequence. Yes. So Ray and BB-8 go off on this adventure because she gets discouraged and they find this key that basically takes Ray to a bunch of different famous moments from the Star Wars franchise. And that's kind all of on the, life day. It's- yeah, exactly. And that's pretty much the essence of the show without again getting into a point where we'll speak longer on it than the actual episode. Yeah. And then there itself. is the B plot like like any good sitcom. <laughs> There's the B plot of trying to throw the perfect life day celebration, yeah. which is also it's it's got some cute moments. That's where you get a lot of like the big heavy hitters popping in because you have yeah. like Billy D showing up and doing Lando yeah. and I will say a lot of these voice actors are pretty good. Cause I was yeah. like, oh, did they get all the actual actors for this? And like a few of them, like a few, I'm like, no, there's no way that that's Finn. Like, but there's a few where I'm like, they actually got pretty close to someone yeah. who sounds like the actual person in a lot of this. Deep cut, case in point, maybe not a deep cut to actual fans, but fucking Max Repo shows up. Yep, <laughs> Max Rebo is the Life Day band. Yep, at the end, like it's it's absolutely insane. I do love that Max Rebo's band shows up. Like, I love that band, dude. Dude, it's so good. It's and so it was good. it was such a I hate to use the word travesty. Yeah, but I'm going to use the word travesty. Oh god, it was, here we go. Are we going to talk changes? I don't care about the changes that much because I have I have the double disc ones where I can watch the the normal version on yeah. DVD or I can watch the the changes. But let's be honest. Yeah. Adding in some extra scenes, throwing in some extra CGI, whatever. You're just going to take out an iconic song from Jabba's Palace and put whatever the fuck that shit was <laughs> in its place? That made I me would s- agree. I was so upset because I'm like, that song, It's is it Yub Nub? No, it's not on the same level as Yub Nub. But it's still a pretty, like, I hear that song and I'm like, yo, we're in fucking Jabba's Palace. Yeah. And then it's some, like, wacky-ass, like... 
80s dance song and i'm like no this is not what the jabba's palace band sounds like it is so insane to me and don't give me that bullshit that like the original reels are lost don't give it to me it is insane to me that disney is still sitting on the money that they would make from dropping those cuts i know there have been rumors for years well so from what i heard my friend made a documentary called people versus george lucas Okay. All about this. It's him interviewing all the different fans or whatever. Yeah. And he, because he was making this documentary, he was very close with a lot of the people that were involved in stuff like this because they were people he interviewed. So when Disney acquired it, he was friends with one of the people who was tasked to like fix some of the problems. (laughs) Okay. And he told me, he's like, dude, George Lucas really did make the changes to the original real what <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding he's like, me he's like that sociopath was so positive that he was improving this movie that he just so he's like it doesn't mean it's not gonna happen but there's a lot of work that has to go into like he's like essentially they have to like digitally remove what was added and then so, pull but, but like old sources is fans have done it yeah oh like for sure <laughs> <laughs> it'll get it'll get there because like you said they are sitting on a gold mine like there is only one way that you will get me to buy those movies again because i've had them in every format yeah but you release those on blu-ray in a widescreen blu-ray of the original cuts yeah i'll drop some money Sold. on that yeah Sold. like because the only downside with the ones that i have is like the dvds that i have it's the only time that it's been available on dvd but yeah. it's like it's a full screen, like Ugh, almost yeah. like shitty VHS transfer. Like it just doesn't look good. Yeah. And I'm sure that that's it. Like, I don't know. I think that there's a lot to factor in because I'm sure that there's a ton that you have to do with the way it was shot, trying to get it to widescreen where you're not seeing like all of the magic behind. Yeah. Like the movie's charming because you can kind of see the magic behind yeah. everything, but you don't want it like fully on display like you just want it just enough like it's where it's just bad enough that you're like ooh, that that star wipe isn't very good or whatever like yeah but. i've got the the complete blu-ray set when they released it the first time the one with all of the movies with i think it has anakin on the cover like yeah. young anakin on the cover i have that set I have the new ones on on Blu-ray. I think I actually have Rise and Last Jedi on 4K because I forgot to cancel my Disney Club membership. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so let me ask you real quick while we're, yeah, while we're on this Star Wars tangent. Yeah, because we're, we're going to have to talk about it. What's your favorite Star Wars movie? My favorite Star Wars movie? Honestly, probably A New Hope. I I'm right there with you. A New Hope. I'm right there with you. I mean, I have A New Hope's the only one that I could just pop on and watch and be done with it. Like, I can't just pop on Emperor. Like, Emperor has no. to come after New Hope. And then yeah. at that point, it's like, well, I, no, I got to put on Return of the Jedi. Usually, I have to watch them as a pack. All right. So. Now, I was going to say the first hour of Return of the Jedi where you're yes. just chilling in Jabba's yes. palace. That's my favorite of all the Star Wars movies. Okay, but yeah. New Hope, there's it's that magic. I I think it's that nostalgia. It's that watching that one with my dad as many times yep. as I did. Like, I love that movie. One of the notes that I wrote down because it made me cry even watching this. Binary Sunrise is such a beautiful composition. Yeah. And every time I hear it, I see that scene. I don't care how bad any prequel or how you feel about like the last three movies when you hear that particular piece of music and it swells and it's the whole orchestra playing if you don't get at least a little like little bit of water welling up in there you're not a true star wars fan to me like that is such a powerful piece of music and star wars is getting to it we'll get back to ranking the movies in a second because i'm gonna do it and i don't care who's listening and i don't care how upset you get with i me. think you and i are going to agree because i am a huge last jedi fan so yeah i like last jedi last but, but jedi we'll get top we'll get three for me but whatever continue okay <laughs> star wars has become less of a franchise and almost like a medium yeah to a certain extent but that's so the thing i love about star wars right now the the world that we're in with star wars right now is that rogue one to a certain extent But even furthermore, Mandalorian have proven the thing that I've been thinking for a really long time, which is like, 
You don't need the fucking Skywalkers to do a Star Wars movie. Nope. Like, nope. you've got a gigantic universe. I've said this on multiple podcasts, and I'll say it on this one, too. Yeah. Disney Plus, if you're listening, I doubt you are, but just in case you are, <laughs> there are three books that would make an incredible anthology series on your streaming platform, and they are called The Tales of Jabba, Jabba's Palace, The Tales of Mos Eisley Bar, and The Tales of the Bounty Hunters, where you just literally do like a Tales from the Crypt, just telling the stories of these characters. I don't need to see what's going on in the Skywalker bloodline. I just want to be in outer space with a bunch of crazy monsters exactly. and some characters doing their yeah. thing. Yeah, here's my take on Star Wars. I I love Star Wars. Everyone knows that I love Star Wars. I hate a lot of Star Wars fans. Oh, for sure. It's like Juggalos. Um, it is very much like Juggalos. I am a Juggalo, and I will <laughs> easily say that Juggalos are some of the worst people in the world, <laughs> not myself included. I, I like to consider myself a closeted Juggalo that's not so closeted. My thing with Star Wars <laughs> is that it is a franchise that caters to kids, as it should. It is a franchise that has continued off the back of making toys, making merchandise, and it is a movie that's made to please children or, or, or young people. Grown adults complaining about the kids' movie not appeasing their needs need to shut the fuck up. All right, so where are we going with this? Are you about to defend the prequels? Is that what's about to happen? No, 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 no. Okay, because I was going to say the prequels, the problem with the prequels to me is that they're kids' movies that are trying to teach kids about government and taxes. No, 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 no. (laughs) If anything, I'm (laughs) defending the three new movies. I So here's where my only beef is, and I still enjoyed all three of those movies. I thought that they were a fun time. My problem is that I really, really liked last jedi i thought that last jedi did a lot of interesting things yeah and i was getting so frustrated watching the rise of skywalker because it was like it literally threw away everything Yeah, it reminds me of when you're watching wrestling and they just drop a story mid season or whatever and you're just like what the fuck why are we just going to ignore that like this dude just burned down a guy's house a, a month ago like it's it was like stuff like that where i'm just like I like this movie. I'd like this movie more if you weren't literally going out of your way to just be like, no, 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 don't, don't even think about that previous film yep. anymore. Yep. Like, the dickheads won. Yeah, they really like did. On that one, and it because sucks. the loud people bitching about Last Jedi were wrong. I'm sorry, they were wrong. It was a good movie. It was an interesting movie. And sometimes it's okay for something to go against your expectations. And that's what I loved about it was that it completely went against everything I thought was going to happen and that was exciting i was like i can't wait to see where this goes next (laughs) and and you know what this is me putting it out there and i'm gonna sound like the worst person in the world here but you know what the loud minority is usually wrong because i will not sit down and waste my time watching this but you cannot tell me that Zack snyder's cut of justice league did anything else than make a bad movie into a mediocre one but the whole point is and it's just gonna get worse as we allow more people to have the ability to voice their opinion on literally everything is i'm really tired of fan base culture like i'm oh, really it's the worst. so it's, sick of it and i i know that we bring up that we're horror fans a lot but like working very close in the horror community you figure that yeah. out too is like yeah. there are some amazing horror people in the world and it, and this isn't me giving a broad generalization but there are definitely some really shitty heavily opinionated people in the horror community i remember yeah the first monster mania we did with horror movie night, some dude was like giving Scott so much shit because he was wearing a, a witch shirt. And they're like, Oh, we found the guy who liked witch. And he was like, it's a brilliantly made movie. And he's like, yeah. they didn't even speak English in that movie. And it's like, what? That's the, le- like, <laughs> he's like, they, I'm sorry. They you did needed- though. Yeah. He's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you needed subtitles to understand old English, but it was English for sure. Yeah, it like- was definitely English. And I'm sure that guy <laughs> crawled home that night and snuggled with his VHS copy of Halloween five. So oh, that guy can sure. go fuck himself. Yeah. He was just like, yeah, 
I really showed that nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Let's chat about some of the bits when they go back in time or when, right, when yeah. she goes back through. Oh, yeah. So um, let's get back on the Lego Star Wars. It's really difficult for us to describe this one. You really should watch it. It's 40 minutes. You'll have a blast. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about the time travel pieces. All right. So they go back in time and they basically hit everything from prequels all the way up to, to Mando. Like, yeah. it's it's pretty much insane. They come across two different versions of Darth Vader at some point, And they yep. do the whole which Darth Vader is which bit which is actually hilarious with Darth Vader. Did I, they had James Earl Jones, right? I think so. I know that I, they had Anthony Daniels for C-3PO, and I know that they had Billy D for Lando. I don't, yeah. let me check. I'll check real quick on that. I feel like James Earl Jones is always down to just <laughs> sit in his closet and record a quick audio clip for a for Star sure, Wars movie. For sure. Other thing, is, like, it's just, it's cute and it's familiar so if if you're a Star Wars fan, you're absolutely going to love it. No? No, some guy named Matt Sloan. Matt Sloan. Matt Sloan, if you're listening right now, good job, dude. <laughs> Excellent James Earl Jones impression. Let me see. He's the only person that also doesn't have a photo on IMDb. Hey, I hope it's actually like James Earl Jones under like a pseudonym. Oh, he's the <laughs> so he does the voice of Darth Vader and it looks like all of the Lego and Star Wars video games. Okay. Well, you found your niche, man. Yeah. And I'm proud of it's, you for that. Man, this is insane. <laughs> I am just oh. He's he's Chad Vader from that uh, YouTube series, Chad Vader. Oh, about the... good for you, Matt Sloan. <laughs> yeah, you did a silly YouTube video and <laughs> turned it into a voice acting career for video hey. for big video games. <laughs> like, hey, man, I, I feel like you're one of us and you made it out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way that's the way to see it, man. I let. So did you have a particular favorite piece of them jumping around through time? I fucking love the bit where the emperor asks uh ren you would never throw me down a, a shaft would you and he's like uh and they <laughs> cut to, to the lightsaber slicing through emperor snoke <laughs> and they cut back and he's like uh no never not down a shaft <laughs> I was going to say everything with Rilo Ken steals yeah. the show for me. Dude, him playing like so this good. giant fanboy, like he's just like the geekiest fanboy about meeting Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader and like the disdain that Darth Vader has towards him. It's all like that whole concept is so funny. They ran the shirtless bit like too far. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit. And especially like watching this with my kids, my students for the first, like the first time. And I'm like, there's like 20 different jokes about this dude not wearing a shirt, which is, is a play off of him not wearing a shirt in Last Jedi, right? Dude, I'm not, I'm not done discussing this, the Star Wars movies. Can we agree that Attack of the Clones is the worst? I 100% agree with that statement. It's boring as shit. The only reason to watch that movie is the Yoda fight at the very, very end. Very you got to deal so. with so much crap. All right, you got to rank them. Rank them right now. All right, okay. I mean, it's not going to be anything too exciting. So starting at the bottom, no. Attack of the Clones, Phantom okay. Menace, Revenge of the Sith. It's my bottom okay. stack. Rise of Skywalker. Okay. Force Awakens. Okay. Rogue One. Okay, so I want to stress, if I was doing what I think is the best made movies, this would be yeah. number one. But I'm going to pop Emperor at number four. Okay. Give Last Emp Jedi Empire. Empire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give Last Jedi that third place, Return of the Jedi, New Hope. You did not include Solo. Where are you putting Solo in there? You uh, include I, Rogue One, so you. Sorry, I always Solo forget that there. Solo existed because I like half watched it. So I'll just okay, say so down at the I'll, bottom. I love I'll Solo. Say, I'll say it's above the prequels. Uh, uh, you know what? I do remember liking quite a bit of it. So I'll put it just above where Rise of Skywalker was. So okay, better than that, worse than the rest. Are you are you, you looked like this? you were pained while I was going through this. So let, I'm the, no, 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 no. There's just there's one that that I've gotten into heated arguments about. All right, all right. So starting from the bottom, attack, mm -hmm. duh, phantom, 
Yep. Oh, you're a fan of Revenge of the Sith, aren't you? I am a fan of Revenge of the Sith. It's so my friend texted me when he saw it opening <laughs> night and he was just like, Hey, good news, Revenge of the Sith is easily better than the other two prequels. <laughs> and then it was like it's almost like he goes, Bad bad news, that's almost like saying it was the biggest shit in the toilet bowl. <laughs> and I was like, so let's say a- attack Phantom Probably Rise. Yeah. Return of the Jedi. Really? Really. I think the second Even the half power, of that movie. Is I know, but the power of that first one just does so much. I know, for but me. it's so fucking boring. But then and people got them. so damn obsessed with Boba Fett. And he like he's in like two minutes of Empire and then just gets fucking like destroyed. We're not talking not mando anymore. right now yeah i was gonna I say know, man, I, know. I would i mean if we're talking the whole universe mando is yeah top two definitely for sure. definitely but but keeping mando and the return of boba fett we're just strictly talking about movies yeah like i don't know man there's just maybe i i might need to just watch return again it's no, been I a agree couple with, years once you leave jabba's palace i'm kind of disinterested but i just love like i could live in that jabba's palace set for like decades i hate the like han oh my god leia's in love with luke and he doesn't know that luke is like their siblings like i hate yeah. that fucking storyline i don't know there's i have issues with return so wh- where are we at so return probably above that is revenge of the sith so i don't okay. l- like i i like revenge of the sith yeah. a lot but it's still more towards my bottom tier last jedi empire force awakens for the sheer fact of like my mindset going into it like i was just so fucking hype solo's in there somewhere i'm the same as you like i like solo but you could move it anywhere in there yeah rogue one new hope i love rogue one is rogue one One i love rogue one rogue Rogue one was in my opinion the first star wars movie we saw where we were like Holy fuck, the stakes are high. Yeah, and you're well, that's the thing. And and I think not following characters that you knew. Yeah. It's like, so are they gonna get out of this or is this like is this the story of how they all die? <laughs> well, that's that's the thing, is like you're sitting there watching this movie and you're sitting there watching it, and you're like, Oh yeah, fucking love these characters, they're awesome. Oh my gosh, dude, it man is fucking some shit up. Like, yeah, fuck yeah, blind Jedi. And you're sitting there watching it, and the last little bit starts happening, and you're like, hmm, I wonder where these characters go next. And then I'm like, <laughs> wait, I've seen the movies that follow the this. Oh, okay. And then everyone fucking dies. Yeah, they all <laughs> eat it. Everyone dies. And... and I, I liked what they did with the CGI. I didn't think I thought Moff Tarkin looked great. I don't know what everybody was complaining about. Yeah, no, I think it's fine. I, I I really I mean that's like I said, it's top five, possibly even very close to top three for me. It's a great that movie. opening interrogation is amazing. It yeah. is right up there with the Inglorious Bastards opening interrogation scene. No, for sure. I mean that's the thing. Star Wars it, when it's good, it's 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 almost like the quote that I always hear about wrestling, like. When wrestling's good, it's really fucking good. Yeah. Like when Star Wars yeah. is good, it's really fucking good. Yeah. And you'll man. sit through a lot of shitty Star Wars to get to the ones that are really fucking good. For sure, but, dude. We sat through the Star Wars Christmas special, the Star Wars holiday special, to get to the Lego Star Wars holiday yeah, special. Yeah, you did. That walk so this one could run. And oh, you know what? So good. There's only one more thing I have to say. Happy Life Day, Dylan. Happy Life Day, Matt. Whoa. Oh, whoa. You're listening to the Geekscape Network. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.